My name's Gavin Parker, and this is the Parker process. Ball roll for about 10 minutes. He was sweating profusely and dropped the class. We didn't even work out yet. So you know what's funny, man, is like in college, I'll never forget, I read this book called The Talent Cut. It was the first time I've ever heard about like expertise or like the 10,000 hour rule or just like deliberate practice in general. And it really resonated with me being like a junior golf instructor. We're outside! When I point at you, you're going. Because everything's about like progress and performance. And then I started thinking about it. It was like, most kids in the 21st century are not gonna be driven enough or motivated enough to do deliberate practice without like being forced to do it. So what's funny is a couple years ago, I read this book called The Ambiguity of Play, and they talked about the rhetorics of play, and there's seven of them. And they say, if an act is done in like the play contents, meaning because you're immersing yourself in so much more meaning than just the, to be proficient at a task or like a scale or to get really good at like playing one note or hitting one ball or practicing this one move in your swing. But if it's done through the rhetorics of play, it only takes 30 to 40 repetitions to actually master that. So that was, was so eye-opening to me to kind of re of evaluate my coaching philosophy, especially when it comes to kids. Wow! Ladies, you feel it? Just gotta get one to stop. All right, Sam, your turn, baby, your turn. A couple weeks ago, we had an end-of-day mission. Then you gotta keep your toes at the tree. Wow! We should hit the condo. this like internal clock, this internal drive, and it started with me from a very young age. The best way I can kind of describe it to you is kind of like um, the video game Pac-Man. In Pac-Man, he spends most of the game being chased by ghosts. But every now and then, he goes to the little corner and he eats one of those power pellets. The whole dynamics of Pac-Man start to change. Pac-Man starts chasing the ghosts. Pac-Man feels on. Pac-Man feels invincible. That's how I felt my entire life. Because I was bred in an environment with my mom and my dad where they supported me making my own decisions. They never discouraged me. They never tried to control me. They never tried to contain me. They helped give me some guidance. And for me, that's what kept me going. The definition of play is free bound movement amongst a rigid structure. And that structure for me is happiness. It is my inalienable right to not only pursue my happiness, but everyone else's around me. So for me, whether I'm going to the gym, whether I'm going on a walk, whether I'm going to Starbucks, whether I'm teaching these kids, it's all about being present and using my energy, such as these power pellets, to fill on and to pass on that same feeling, that same energy that same excitement, that same enthusiasm with others. You gotta stay flexy, CrossFit. This is like year three for me. And we do so many things that are like in the sagittal plane. Like, so it's a lot of linear strips, so like hamstrings, squats, bent over rows, push press. So my golf game, it, it's really important for me to get my hamstrings activated because everything in golf is more of the transverse plane. You gotta turn, 
create some range of motion. So when I do CrossFit, it definitely affects my golf game. But I'm not doing CrossFit to go compete. I do it because it's exercise. I got some of my homies in here. I mean, it's Monday morning. We about to get after it. So we're about to go run now. Got my workout in, about two miles today. Don't slow down at that pace. I wasn't put on this planet for my own purpose. I'm here to help everyone else around me. And I have been given this ability to tap in and harness these power pellets to have all this energy, to have all this hype, to have all this excitement, and to have all this drive. And I'm meant to share it. And I'm here to share it and spread my joy and exude happiness in every capacity that I'm doing. Because what I do not want to do is when people ask me, hey Gavin, what'd you do yesterday? I'm not going to be the guy to say, oh, nothing, chilling. Because you're not going to be here forever. We're not here for a long time, so being that I'm not here forever, I want to make the best of it. I want to put my best foot forward and tackle every opportunity I have in front of me. And at the end of the day, I'm just out here to eat some power pellets. You only get four a day, so use them wisely, like our boy Pac-Man did. Dude, it it's awesome. We've been looking forward to this yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the junior golf space, there's nowhere in the United States of America where a kid who has never played golf before ever a day in their life, the kid who's, you know, the country club kid, you know what I'm saying, like the kids played golf since they were like three, the athletic kid, and then you got to like kind of like that band kid. Where can they go where all four kids have an even opportunity to win a game of junior golf? They can't go anywhere because everything in junior golf is normally predicated on who can hit the ball the farthest or who can make the most putts or who can make a ball stop in this zone, but if you put it in like a play context and they play like a real game that has an alternative win state, such as like randomness or chance or different player interactions, now you welcome more kids to participate, more kids that want to play for the sake of playing, and then because they're playing, they're getting so many more touches and so many more reps. So that's the beauty of like the Proctor process is we're out here to design not only golf outcomes, but social outcomes, and the most important ones, the emotional outcomes to allow memories to be made. So delivered practice is great if kids want to be very skilled, but let's face it, if you ask 100 kids randomly, hey, do you want to be good at golf? Two of them are going to be like, yeah. So what are you going to do for those other 98 kids? You can't put them in deliberate practice because they'll get bored, but if you can immerse them in an environment where they're playing for the sake of playing and they actually care about where the ball goes, that's the sauce, that's the magic. The airport early. Yep. Uh, but, um, so, you know, I, Adrian is working across all of our clients thinking about, you know, entrepreneurial opportunities to create new business lines. She's, you know, the source. Back in like a bag, you know, like a backpack or a suit, like just something like, it doesn't just have to be a pair, but I can rock a glasses, a back, like just, I don't know, anything in that capacity. Cause I'll have my cameraman there too, in addition with the PGA's people, so. Oh, exactly, yeah, Chim 4. And if you want like Grayson joggers with that. Yeah, that, that would be a great pool. Yeah, like pants. Um, so next week I'll be tasked with kind of recreating the famous shots from that week. So if Justin Thomas or Max Homa hold out a bunker, within 30 minutes I have to say, hey guys, you know, this is how Max Homa just hold out the bunker. Let's have your stance a little bit open, aim left, and then try to recreate that moment. But my dad actually was the first person to put golf in my hands. Um, and his name was Flo, 
And then as I did a lot of research in the performance realm, you know, like being in the flow states, like the ultimate state of human performance. Because it cannot be healthy or safe to only celebrate the results, such as get good grades, go to a good school, get a good job. Everything you're putting on with that type of belief system is all about outcomes. Where the greats, the most elite, the top performance understands about the process. It's about the journey to getting there, not just the destination. And kids have no opportunities to actually be leaders. So your kids are coming out here to the Parker process to not only get better at the golfing outcome, which is easy to engineer by the way, but what we are doing is we're getting to a place where kids can make their own decisions, they can critical think, they're learning emotional intelligence because they're playing games where they're making their own choices on top of taking a seven iron and working on trajectory crawl control and making balls stop at different spots. We're just doing it in a more distilled version that's doing the best parts of golf, which is that stick and ball loop over and over and over again. I'm at war. I'm at war for capturing kids' attention. I'm at war for keeping kids engaged. I'm at war because kids right now have no idea how to become leaders anymore. Kids have no opportunity to make eye contact with other human beings. Kids don't have a place where they can create their own problems and then solve them without being criticized. Yes, I teach golf. But more importantly, I teach people. And most junior golf programs in the country, all the win states or all the win conditions are only focused on the kids that have skill, meaning who can hit the ball the farthest, or who can make the most putts, or who can make the ball stop near the line. The kids that win those games are the kids that already think golf is cool. Most kids don't think golf is cool. What I'm trying to do is solve the dilemma of the kids who want more than just competition or for the kids that want to use play for more than just being the best or performance. The Parker process allows kids to use play to learn about themselves. I use play to build a community that's centered around inclusion, diversity, accessibility, wonderment, triumph, fiero, joy, frustration, and pain because pressure those are the things that you're gonna experience in life, but if you can do them through play, where the outcomes aren't only based on who's the most skilled or who's the best, but now you have outcomes that are based on chance or randomness or luck, kind of like life, now these kids have something where they can have an outlet, where they're in an environment that allows them to emotionally connect with something so that a memory can be made.